Good morning everybody, and that's of course you're watching this video in the evening, and that gives good evening, and you're watching Time Travel TV. Today I thought, because all this talk of personal protective equipment on the news, I thought I'll do an episode on First World War helmets, which is probably the only thing which is ever going to make you feel better about the lack of personal protective equipment you hear about on the news these days. Anyway, so, at the beginning of the First World War in 1914, no army actually had any helmets to cover their heads against the bullets, at all. Uh, the most people really had was uh, this here, which is a, a 1880 pattern, uh, enlisted man German uh, field cap. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit on the um, fabric -y side and a bit on the non-bulletproof side. Uh, on the upside, other German soldiers did have these, which, this is a, uh, a relic of a German pickle hob, which is one of those spiked helmets, which is a little leather helmet. Um, this one has seen better days, as you can see, the most of it is gone. Anyway, so that's about the most people had at the start. Until one incredibly clever person, a uh, French person, uh, said, why don't we have a little metal hat on our head, which is going to protect the bullets keep the bullets out. And they said, this is a great idea. Uh, so they came up with this. This is the uh, M1915 Adrian helmet. And it looks a bit like a fireman's helmet to me, personally. And uh, uh, it's, uh, well, it is what it is really, isn't it? It is a, uh, a little metal hat to stop the bullets getting in. And this is probably the first time that army's ever had helmets since about the 16th century. Uh, there is a protective. There, there, there is a. Uh, this piece at the top is to uh, deflect saber blasts. There is a peak at the front and the back uh, to uh, uh, um, um, protect the face and the neck. Although there is a, quite a few problems about with it. Firstly, uh, there is. Uh, it's made up of a lot of bits. We have the rim, which is piece one. Uh, which is also, they also have the uh, shell, which is piece two. We have this piece at the top, which is piece three. We have the bad, which is piece four. Plus we have all the rivets holding it together. We have the strap lugs on the inside, and we have the liner. It, it's so bitty, and this is a problem for two reasons. First of all, that when metal in metal in wartime is short, because they're making stuff out of metal. They're making battleships, they're making bullets, they're making tanks, although not tanks in 1915, I might have said. Uh, but they're making loads of stuff. So you want to cut down the metal by using as few metal parts as possible. Second of all, the more bits you use, the more brittle it becomes. Uh, this piece, because it is made up of so many bits, it is going to break more easily if it was hit by a piece of shrapnel. So, this helmet, although revolutionary, is terrible. So, in 1916, uh, the British decide to make their own helmet. Uh, they entrust it to a man called Brodie. And this Mr Brodie chap went down to uh, the, uh, the, the Tower of London and said, that is a good helmet, seeing one of the displays. And it looked very similar to this one here. This is a Mark I Brodie helmet based off a 14th century helmet from around about the War of the Roses time. 14th century? No, 15th century is War of the Roses, isn't it? I always get confused with centuries and things. It's 1400s, 15th century. That's how it is. And this helmet is much better. As you can see, this is all made of one bit of metal, which is a lot better. Uh, but there is another problem with it. It doesn't protect the neck very well, uh, be uh, because if I just turn him around there, you can see there's a lot of uh, room there for things to go wrong. So, uh, uh, we have got the progression from the Adrian helmet to the Brody helmet, and eventually, in 1916, the Germans say, hey guys, we can do this up way better. So they come up with this, which is the M1916 helmet, which is so cool because it was made in 1916, because they are so imaginative with their names. Um, literally, they still do that now. <laughs> um, 
If, if it's an M with a number afterwards, the number is probably an indication of either what mark it is, like M1 that might mean Mark 1, or M1915, which might mean it was first made in 1915. They're really not very imaginative with these names. So we've got the M1916 helmet here, which, to be honest, helmets design-wise never really got much more advanced than this even today. The um, uh, Queen State, the reason why it's so rusty because it was dug up from the battlefield. Um, so um, uh, I'm sorry about that. This is the best condition German one I've got. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's only made of one piece, which is an improvement on this. Well, predominantly made of one piece, of course, there's bits here. Um, uh, if we turn it around this way, it's got a way more protection of the neck. If we turn it around completely, then you can't see the neck at all. Uh, and uh, it's, it's much lower on the head. Um, coincidentally, the reason why it's, it's, this one sits incredibly low is because it hasn't got a line like it's been in the ground for about... Uh, it was in the ground for about 90 years before it was dug up. So, although, even though um, this one sits too low, they did sit genuinely low anyway. Uh, although, they could actually see out. This guy can't see out. I'm sorry. Anyway. So, uh, th this... Even the World War II German helmets didn't look much different from this. Uh, a couple of changed things. These um, little, uh, uh, they, they look like bolts on the side, they're air vents. These became a bit smaller. Um, the whole thing became a bit more streamlined in World War II. But even the modern NATO helmets are, I mean, although they're not made of the same material, they're made of composite material, they, are, they look vaguely similar to this. So, to be honest, within about a year, you went from possibly the least good helmet ever, but we can we can uh, we, we, we can uh, uh, we can let them off that because it was the first. But in a year, they went from this, which isn't very good, to this, which is superb, and that is World War One helmets. Granted that there it is more complicated than that because you've got various variants of them, but this is the basics. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know I did, uh, and. Uh, if you did, please subscribe and watch more of my videos, and cheerio!